Good morning, Unity. Please stand up and help me bring some joy and energy to this morning. I'm in the right place at the right time. I am just where I'm supposed to be. I'm in the right place at the right time. I am just where I'm supposed to be. I'm in the right place. At the right time, I am just where I'm supposed to be. I'm in the right place, in the right time. I am just where I'm supposed to be. My soul is welcome here. Oh, my soul is welcome here. I am getting a message loud and clear. My soul is welcome here. Time. I am just where I'm supposed to be. I'm in the right place at the right time. I am just where I'm supposed to be. I'm in the right place at the right time. I am just where I'm supposed to be. I'm in the right place at the right time. I am just where I'm supposed to be. My soul is welcome here, oh, my soul is welcome here. I am getting a message loud and clear, my soul is welcome here. My soul is welcome here, oh, my soul is welcome here. I am getting a message loud and clear, my soul is welcome here. breath I breathe. I see God in everything. I see happiness. I see freedom. I see the beauty that lives in me. I see God in what it I see God in everything. I feel joy. I feel peace. I feel the goodness surrounding me. I feel love in every breath I breathe. I see God in everything. I know happiness, I know freedom. 
I know the beauty that lives in me. I know the I see God in everything. I know the joy. I know the peace. I know the truth in me. I know the love in everything. God be. I see God in everything. I know happiness. I know freedom. I know perfection and mercy. I know God in everything. I know God in everything. Thank you, Mitch. That was great. I and also, we would have. Special music by Ronnie Ong later on. And behind all our music, the boys in the corner. Good morning. My name is Ron. I am a licensed unity minister. Nope, that's a wannabe. I'm a licensed unity teacher here. <laughs> at Unity in Walnut Creek, and it is my pleasure to look at all these beautiful faces out here. And as a native Californian, I would love to say, it rained last night. Yeah! If you're new here to Unity, welcome. We are very glad that you're here, and we hope that you find that special thing that you're looking for to move you forward on your spiritual path. And please join me in welcoming our people, our folks online. So turn around and wave good morning. Thank you, thank you, thank you for being here. We truly appreciate you. And please know that you are part of our Unity community here in Walnut Creek. So Unity is a positive path for spiritual living. And part of that spiritual path is the truth of knowing that there are many paths to that divine spirit within all of us and all around us. And throughout our services, you may hear different teachings or different lyrics from each one of those spiritual paths because they know, we know, that they all lead to the same place, that divine spirit within us and all around us. So yay for divine spirit. <laughs> this morning we are very blessed. We have a special speaker with us. This is Reverend Larry Schneider. <laughs> he served as a senior minister of the Sierra from 2002 to 2015. He is now retired. Yay for retirement. <laughs> he is now re has retired from church ministry and devotes his time to teaching his two favorite courses and facilitating a weekly book study group and practice them. So please give a warm unity welcome to Reverend Larry Schneider. So speaking of divine spirit, let us open our service with our affirmation, bringing forth to our consciousness that divine spirit. So please, Take a deep breath and just let the love all around you feed into your hearts. And say with me, there is only one presence and one power in the universe and in my life, the all-loving goodness of God. Take a deep breath and just let that soak in. And let's say it again. There is only one presence and one power in the universe and in my life, the all-loving goodness of God. And let that soak in ever deeper. Just take one more deep breath. And again, there is only one presence and one power in the universe and in my life, 
the all-loving goodness of God. And please stay seated and join us in God is Amazing. continue our experience of prayer as our heart minister Susan leads us in the blessing for France followed by the meditation by Reverend Larry Schneider this is a prayer for Kenya and for France today we hold in prayer the people of Kenya and France beloved presence Bring your mighty, magnificent, and all-encompassing love to all the people in the midst of chaos and restore to them hope in the place of hopelessness, courage in the place of fear, peace in the pla place of their confusion, and comfort in the place of their pain. We open our hearts in deep compassion as they grieve and recover. We open our hearts in deep compassion for those who committed these acts. May God's light shine brightly in this hour of darkness, bringing healing to all. And so it is. Amen. This morning, I'm going to invite you to go to a special place, a sanctuary, not unlike this one, but one that you find inside yourself. Everyone has a special place, don't we, that we would love to return to. It could be out in nature. It might be a, a home that we used to live in. It might even be an actual sanctuary in a church. I'd like to invite you to visualize that place and go to it this morning. Sit there in the silence. Allow the music now to take you into that place. Let's close our eyes, bring it to mind.
safety, the beauty and the comfort of our own private sanctuary. For the next few minutes, rest in that safety and rest in that silence. But also bring in the expectation of being given a gift in the stillness now. What a blessing it is that we don't have to drive miles and miles to be in a sacred place. All we have to do is close our eyes and go to our own sanctuary. It's such a blessing. But the time has come that we have to leave it for the moment. And so I invite you, as the music plays, to step away from your sanctuary and return in consciousness to this room.
my breath all of life can bring. I plant a seed with my every dream. I'm loved at every turn. I am kissed by mother. I am a child of this universe. I greet the God in each face. I am a channel for peace to flow. I am honored by all life. I am held by Wow. <laughs> Ronnie, that was awesome. Thank you. My name is Javier Cortez, and it's truly my pleasure to highlight some of the upcoming events here at Unity. Time for Heart Math Cut Through the Tune-Up. On Tuesday, November 17th, go beyond working your stuff out. Learn to cut through it. And that will be at 7 p.m. here at Unity. If you have not been able to attend a 2020 Insight Home Gathering, to help create the future for our spiritual home by sharing what has meaning to you, please join us for the final, final, final special insight gathering next Sunday afternoon. We would like to especially encourage parents and older teens to attend this final gathering session. Our Thanksgiving celebrations begin on Wednesday evening. Join Reverend David for a very special service of appreciation. Give thanks to God for the many forms of goodness that fills our lives. And on Thanksgiving Day, we will once again have our turkey dinner at noon. This is a fun time with your Unity community. Potluck sign up for our, on the patio today or in the book center during the week. Find out more about these events and other activities online or in today's bulletin. So until you hear the gong, please take a short moment to greet the people immediately around you. Blessings, 
God gives me everything I need. God gives me everything I need. Wow. I have to tell you, before we start, um, 
That was um, Israel's song from uh, his album. And um, I think that song was also in 51st Dates, the movie. Uh-huh. That's right. Yeah. My wife and I didn't know if we were going to make it through this. We were sitting down there holding each other's hands <laughs> tightly. Every time we've heard that song, we tear up. It is so beautiful. And, I mean, you gave it heart. I had to take out a hanky. <laughs> I didn't lose it completely. Wow. Well, it's wonderful to be here this morning and up here. I'm usually over in a classroom. This is really nice. Um, I've been over, uh, I, well, I think, about three or four times. Stayed at your home one time. Went to a ball game. We won. <laughs> and... Uh, it's wonderful to be back. I always feel like I'm kind of at home when I come over to Unity of Walnut Creek. And I hope I have something special to share with you this morning. Many of you have been students in the classes that I do. But for those that don't know who I am, Larry Schneider. Um, and I've been in a lot of places. Uh, in fact, as I was thinking about sharing with you some of the places... It almost like, sounds like I'm just one step ahead of a creditor. <laughs> um, I was born in Knoxville, Tennessee, so I'm a Tennessee hillbilly by birth, but I lived most of my life in a little town in Florida that used to be a little town. It was only 8,000 people. Now there's almost half a million. Clearwater, Florida, which is on the Gulf Coast near Tampa and St. Petersburg. But I've also lived in... Valdosta, Georgia, Baltimore, Maryland, where I taught a couple of years at the University of Maryland in Baltimore County. I've been in Bristol, Virginia, uh, Houston, Texas, where I met my wonderful wife. And so I've moved around uh, Oklahoma City, Oklahoma for five years. Any of those places, streak? anybody from any of those places? Oh, well, you're all from California, huh? <laughs> Hadn't been out of state? <laughs> okay, well, that's all right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, and here I am too. In fact, Paula and I have decided we are not going to leave Minden, Nevada, which is where we live. Uh, that was the first and only church I worked with, uh, and I retired out of it. Although I'm finding now I'm doing more than I was doing when I was full-time church. And we're loving it. We absolutely love it. But we're going to stay in Minden. Um, and I congratulate you for having rain. It confused me this morning. <laughs> we're, we're honored to stay with Jack at, at his house. And I have to tell you, I got up this morning and walked in the bathroom. And I kept looking for where the water was running. <laughs> um, what I have to share with you this morning is... Very close to my heart because I believe very strongly in stories. I think you and I are really a species that loves stories. I was raised on them. When I was a young boy, we only had one or two television stations, and you couldn't always get them. So television wasn't that reliable. What was reliable was radio. And the radio had all sorts of wonderful programs. Symphony orchestras, big bands, it was all sorts, including storytellers. Fibber McGee and Molly, the Green Lantern, the Shadow, all sorts of stories on the radio. And you had to listen carefully because it was called the theater of the mind. You didn't have anything in front of you, but you had to get into the story. So I've always been enthralled by storytellers. When I was in junior college, have you ever had a teacher that changes your life? From the moment that you meet them, they plant a seed, and from then on, everything changes? It was in junior college I had such a teacher, because I was kind of a very ordinary high school person. My only claim to fame was I was a drum major. 
And the only reason I could drum major, be drum major was because I was such a show off. <laughs> but when I got to community college, a lady, her name was Mary Waters. Mary saw me struggling with a book by Ernest Hemingway, For Whom the Bell Tolls. I remember it very clearly because she invited me into her office one time. And she began to tell me something. And it stuck with me. She said, Larry, there's a surface story. But in good literature, there's always a story within a story within a story. And the last story to be told is the greatest story of all because the story is about you. Wonderful to learn that. I never forgot it, and it changed everything from that day on. I never read a great piece of work the same way again. That's why I'm so excited about unity, because in unity, those of you that have had metaphysical Bible, you know that every Bible story at its very heart is a story about who? You and I and our relationship with the divine. And so I have always been enthralled by stories. Today I'm going to tell you two stories. And I invite you to find the truth within the story you delve within. I'll give you a slight interpretation, but I'm going to invite you to look for the answers. The first story is about stories. Once upon a time, there were two beautiful sisters. They lived in a cottage just beyond a small town. Now, one day, the sisters got into an argument. Now, all siblings get into arguments. These two were arguing about who was the most beautiful. And so they decided to have a contest. And they would let the people in the town decide. What they were going to do is, one at a time, they would walk through the center of the street and the number of people that came out to talk and to share would be an indication of their beauty. The one that had the most people paying attention was the most beautiful. And so the first sister, by the way, her name was Truth. Truth starts to walk through the town. But lo and behold, what happens, people in the streets go up on the sidewalks and move away from her. People in their yards and on the sidewalks go up onto their porches, back into sh shops. No one talks to her. In fact, they move away from her. She gets to the other end of town and she realizes, I'm going to lose this contest. I've got to find a way to get their attention. So she decides, I'll take off my clothes. <laughs> Can I say that? <laughs> I've already said that. Are you live streaming? It's a done deal. So she takes off her clothes and she walks back through town. But lo and behold, what happens? It's even worse. People go inside their shops. They close the door. They go out into their houses, close the shutters. She gets back and she said, I've lost. I've lost. You've won. And I don't understand it. And so her sister says, well, let me tell you what happened. Now, by the way, her sister's name is Story. And Story says it's very simple. People are afraid of the truth. And they're especially afraid of the naked truth. <laughs> it's about as bad as it gets. And so... What you have to do is accompany the truth with a story, and people will accept it. And so story and truth walked back into the town, and the people came out, gathered around, and talked to them. And that's the end of that story. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to tell you... <laughs> It's your imagination. Use whatever you want. Now, 
I'm going to tell another story, and stories can be used for different purposes. You can just use a story to entertain. You can use it just for fun. You can also use a story to persuade people or deceive people. I won't mention any politics. But there are a lot of stories that are just used to persuade us. The greatest story ever told is a story in which there's a truth about us. And the storyteller is trying to reflect a truth about us. I hope this is such a story. It's called Saving the Bride and Groom. Now, it's taken from the Jewish tradition. In fact, I've got five lessons that I like to give, and I realized the other day they're all Jewish tales. And I think it's because they're real storytellers. They love to tell stories. And so I'm going to share this story with you from the Jewish tradition. It's actually taken from a book, Shlomo's Stories. It's from Rabbi Shlomo Karlbeck, and I believe he was in San Francisco, wasn't he? So he's a local, semi-local. Is this local? Okay. Yeah, well, I guess you get the metro, you're local. So this is one of Slomo's tales. Now, the only, I'm going to revise it a little bit because it's filled with all sorts of Jewish tradition and Jewish terminology. So I'm going to update it into something we would understand. Now, the only term I'm going to use that is really from the Jewish tradition is a Lamed Vav. Uh, the Jewish letter Lamed is also the number 30. Vav is the number 6. And so we have Lamed Vav, 36. And there's a tradition about the number 36. There are 36 righteous people on earth. God has placed them there. They are known for their, their, their humility and their compassion. And if they ever lose one of the 36, it drops below that number, the world ends as we know it. Okay? Here we go. I'm going to share with you the story of saving the bride and groom. Once upon a time, there was a very famous and well-known rabbi. He was not only well-known for his compassion and his wisdom, but he had an unusual gift. He had the gift of sight, where he could see into the soul of a person. One day, the rabbi was praying with a minion, which is ten men. And someone came to him and said, Rabbi, one of your congregation is dying. Can you come pray with him? The rabbi immediately said yes and took the ten with him. It was the house of a water carrier, a very simple man. They went in, they were invited into the bedroom where he was lying in the bed dying. And as the rabbi walked through the door, suddenly he stops, he's shaken, and he leans against the door. The color drains from his face. Finally, it comes back to him. He gains his composure and he walks up to the old man and says, how may we pray with you? The old man said, I'm afraid. I know I'm dying. And the rabbi says, what are you afraid of? He says, I'm afraid that when I reach heaven and the angels bring out the scales of life to weigh my good and my bad, I'm not going to have enough good. And so the rabbi says, well, let's explore that just a moment. And they begin to talk about it. And as they talk, the old man remembers something. He said, well, you know, I, I do remember. When I was a young man, I was raised on a farm, and I was very good with animals. I was visiting the city one day, and I was going down a path, a road, when suddenly I heard a loud commotion behind me. And as I turned to see what it was, it was a wagon with a bride and a groom being drawn by two horses. And it was out of control. They were so in love and so infatuated, so into each other, they lost sight of the fact the wagon was out of control. And if it got to the bottom of the hill they were on, they were going to be killed. So without hesitation, I stood in front of the horses, put my hands up and said, stop. 
And the horses were so shocked, they slowed down. And I said to the bride and groom, jump, jump now. And they jumped. I stepped to the side and let the wagon and the horses go by. And sure enough, at the bottom of the hill, the wagon was torn to pieces and both animals died. And as he related this, he could remember other stories and he began to share them. It finally came time to leave and the rabbi said, look, we were going to go now, but I want you to make me a promise. When you reach heaven and you are judged, will you come back and tell me what happens? And the old man promised. They left and later that week he did die. It was now Shabbat, Friday evening. The ten, along with the rabbi, were at dinner celebrating the rabbi at the head of the table when suddenly, once again, his face drains of color. Finally, his color returns and he has a smile on his face. Rabbi, what was that all about? And the rabbi says, do you remember the old man that we visited earlier this week? I said, yes. He says, before I tell you what happened, I have to tell you something. My reaction when we walked into the room was of shock and awe. Because when I looked into his face, I saw a lump and bob. The old man was so pure of heart and so humble, even he didn't know he was a lump and bob. And he just told me what happened when he got to heaven. He said, when I reached heaven, I was still afraid. The gates were closed. And suddenly the angels began to bring forth the scales of life to weigh my good and my bad. And I felt fear. But before I knew it, I heard a loud commotion behind me. And I turned to see a wagon with a bride and a groom drawn by two horses that were out of control. And without any hesitation, I leapt upon the one horse and rode it right into heaven. <laughs> and that's the story of saving the bride and groom. What's that got to do with you and I? I think what it's saying is what the rabbis now teach. That there are many moments in our life in which we can open the gates of heaven and get a peek. It's not necessarily saving a bride and groom. What they represent to me is those moments when we are honest, truthful, and come from our heart. Those moments when we don't cheat, but we do the honest thing with our tax forms. Those moments when we are honest with our spouses, our friends, when we tell the truth, when we act in truth, each of those moments we are jumping on that horse and the gates are opening and we get a glimpse of what heaven is really like. So I invite you this week to stay awake. Find an opportunity to do the right and loving thing for another human being. And in that moment, I believe in all my heart, you have just saved the bride and groom. Thank you. Thank you, Reverend Schneider. Thank you. I ask everyone to take a connection card from the seat pocket in front of you. We invite everyone to take a moment to fill out this card. With this card, we can request prayer support for something or someone in our lives. 
In addition, our heart ministers are available after the service for the wonderful experience of prayer support. They are the ones wearing the lavender stoles. Prayer requests can also be sent anytime through our website. The ushers will receive your card with the offering towards the end of the music. It's now time for our prosperity celebration. For credit card donations, there are envelopes on the clipboards in the back of each chair. Or for those of you at home, just click on the donate button on the Watch Live page. As Unity's co-founder, American mystic Charles Fillmore said, God is the source of a mighty stream of substance, and you are a tributary of that stream, a channel of expression. Blessing the substance increases its flow. I invite you to take your tithe or offering in your hand and be aware. Be aware that God is the source of all your good. Repeat our affirmation with me together. Divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I am, all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. And I'm truly grateful. Blessing our children. Children, you are loved, special, and important. The light of God shines And please take hands for our prayer protection. The light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. 
the power of God protects us, and the presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is, and all is well. light and the peace in the earth right now. So Crossed over. 